Thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss the F101-06-00 drainage improvement project in the San Jacinto Galveston Bay watershed. I'd like to start the evening off with remarks from Harris County Precinct 2 Commissioner Adrian Garcia. Good evening, everyone. This is Harris County Commissioner Adrian Garcia of Precinct 2. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that this has been a difficult year on everyone, and my heart goes out to anyone who has been seriously impacted or who may have lost a loved one during this pandemic. We're in it together, and I still want to wish you and your loved ones a safe, happy, and healthy holiday season. Thank you to the Harris County Flood Control District as well for continuing their hard work and engaging the community. For them, it's still been a difficult year, but I want to thank them for finishing off the year strong and keeping these projects moving, even during this pandemic. These projects are incredibly important to the future of our community. Tonight, we're here to talk about drainage improvements to move stormwater from the Valley View Drive Bridge to near Sins Road. Proposed improvements include adding concrete lining over a pipeline corridor and additional stormwater detention to ensure stormwater conveyance does not impact the areas downstream. I'll let the experts cover the details, but I want to be sure you know that this is part of the 2018 bond program and it will work together with other flood risk reduction initiatives. We're thankful that you've all joined us tonight as community engagement is a crucial part of our work. I'm excited to hear about this project and your input on how we can best serve your community. With that, I'll hand it back over to the experts. Thank you and have a great evening. All right, thank you so much for that, Commissioner Garcia. This virtual community engagement meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to continue to share vital information with the community during this period when in-person public meetings have been suspended due to safety concerns from the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Sparkle Bell with the Flood Control District Communications Division. I'm joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. It is a pleasure to see the community so engaged in this project and we look forward to continuing to share updates to keep the community involved. The virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share updates about the F101-06-00 drainage improvements project. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the website or via phone. Any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the public comment period. Instructions on how to participate in this virtual open house are included on this slide on the virtual meeting webpage and on the Flood Control District's website. I will also share a reminder of these instructions when we reach the Q&A portion of the meeting. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Jonathan St. Romain, Capital Projects South Department Manager, who will be our main presenter tonight. Over to you, Jonathan. Thank you, Sparkle, and a special thank you to each of you for joining us tonight. In this presentation, we will give you a brief overview of plans for drainage improvements along a tributary in the San Jacinto River and Galveston Bay watershed that we identify as F101-06-00. But before we get to the project, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district created by the Texas Legislature in 1937, and that was in response to devastating floods in 1929 and then again in 1935. Flood Control District was created to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction projects. Our mission has greatly expanded over the past 80 years with billions of dollars in infrastructure improvements in the ground. While we are a separate entity from Harris County, the Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our governing body. 
The mission of the Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of the most difficult challenges that we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to the community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 22 main watersheds, totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channels. And that's approximately the distance from New York, New York to California. Each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. And tonight we are in the San Jacinto River and Galveston Bay watershed of Southeast Harris County. Uh, and that's marked here with a red star. Our region has always faced the threat of flooding. Our low lying, relatively flat land, predominantly clay soils all create a naturally flood, pr flood prone environment. These flooding issues become more apparent when combined with dense population centers and development that has occurred in our region. The Flood Control District works with other agencies and shares jurisdiction over flooding issues in Harris County. This slide illustrates those shared jurisdictions. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of the illustration, Storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving it away from streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality in Harris County engineering in unincorporated parts of the county. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. And this is shown on the right side of the illustration. In the middle is a stormwater detention basin, sometimes constructed by the flood control district. When storm sewers are increased in size, this creates an increase in runoff. Since it's our policy to avoid adverse impacts to properties downstream, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rain events. Often we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25th, 2018, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion in bonds for flood damage or for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. 144 of those 181 projects have been initiated so far, including several projects in the San Jacinto and Galveston Bay watershed. A total of more than $680 million in partnership funding received so far stretches the 2018 bond program even further. The actual timing of individual projects will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocation. Project lists and projected schedules will be updated periodically. Partnership funding is an important aspect of the 2018 bond program. This graphic illustrates the very many sources of federal, state, and local funding that the Flood Control District is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding. And we'll now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the F-10106 channel improvement project. The project is located in Harris County Precinct 2, southwest of the intersection of State Highway 225 and State Highway 146. It's located in the San Jacinto and Galveston Bay watershed. The 1500 foot long project, which is shown here in red, is located in the city of LaPorte. The project extends east from Valley View Drive to the junction with the F101-00-00 channel, which is about 1900 feet west of Sims Road. 
This project builds on previous projects to improve this channel and it fits in with future drainage improvement plans for the watershed as a whole. We are currently in the preliminary engineering stage of this project, as indicated here by the red arrow. This is relatively early in the typical project life cycle. During this stage, which is also known as project development, flood control district engineers and environmental specialists develop and evaluate possible alternatives and prepare a preliminary engineering report that includes project recommendations that meet flood damage reduction goals. This report will identify the needed right of way, determine utility relocation, and develop a preliminary cost estimate. In keeping with promises made in connection with the 2018 bond program, we also seek and consider community questions and feedback on the project during the preliminary engineering stage. Future steps in the project lifecycle include design, construction, and operations and maintenance. So here's a closer look of the project site, or a closer view of the project site. The existing grass line channel is located within a 60 foot wide right of way easement, which is marked here in red. Water in the channel moves from west to east, which is uh, left to right on your screen. You can also see an existing pipeline corridor, which is marked here in blue, and this crosses the project site. Pipes within this corridor run north and south, and they cross underneath the existing channel. Designing a project that avoids impacts to this pipeline corridor presents a significant challenge. And here are some recent site photos. On the left, we are facing east from Valley, from Valley View Drive. And the photo on the right, we are facing west toward the Valley View Drive Bridge. Both of these photos show a well-maintained and relatively shallow grass-lined channel. Replacement of the existing Valley View Bridge was not considered as part of this project since the bridge is owned by a separate municipality and is not within the Flood Control District's jurisdiction. Now we'll move to look at some other recent site photos. In the photo on the left, we are facing east in the direction of Sims Road, and the pipeline corridor is clearly indicated by the number of pipeline mark by a large number of pipeline markers. In order to make these proposed improvements, the flood control district must obtain approval from the 18 companies to cross 58 pipelines. In the photo on the right, Again, facing east, but a little farther downstream, the F-10106 channel enters the junction with the F-10100 channel. And this is about 1900 feet west of Sims Road. And this junction, has, uh, you can see a concrete clay liner that was part of a past project to improve this channel. As mentioned before, the planned project will work together with these earlier improvements. So the project purpose is to reduce flooding risk adjacent to the F-10106 channel and upstream areas. The proposed improvements include a new concrete channel lining for approximately the western half of the channel, while the eastern half will remain grass lined. The concrete lining will allow the channel to carry away excess stormwater more quickly, which reduces the risk of flooding while the stormwater detention will take, would temporarily take in and store the excess stormwater to be sure that there are no downstream adverse impacts. A concrete lining on the western half of the channel accomplishes the goal of improving stormwater conveyance without the need to deepen the channel, which could result in costly relocations of the many underlying pipelines. The new concrete lining actually would provide greater protection for the pipelines while also improving stormwater conveyance. Coordination with those pipeline companies is already underway. Various stormwater storage options include areas excavated within the channel or areas excavated separately from the channel but connected to it so that stormwater can flow in during heavy rain. 
As part of this preliminary engineering phase, we're looking to determine which of these options is best. All three channel alternatives or options for this project will use a concrete line channel from Valley View Drive across the pipeline. As mentioned before, use of concrete channel allows for greater flow rate while avoiding potentially costly pipeline impacts. The three alternatives considered during the preliminary engineering process each present a different option for providing the stormwater detention necessary to mitigate for the proposed increased flow rates. The alternatives vary by cost, if viable, but if viable, all have the same benefits in terms of lowering water surface elevations and so reducing the risk of flooding during a heavy rainfall event. Another constraint for this project is its location north of the LaPorte Municipal Airport and within the Federal Aviation Administration's 5,000 foot clearance zone for the construction of open water resources near airports. That means the project must not create open water, which could attract birds and would consequently present a hazard to aircraft. Due to the proximity of the proposed channel improvements and stormwater detention areas to the airport, stormwater detention areas and channel will not feature a permanent pool of water. This so-called dry bottom basin, uh, these, these dry bottom basins are designed to fill with stormwater during heavy rain events, but then drain dry after the heavy rain has stopped. So what are the next steps for this project? They include obtaining and considering public input, as we are here tonight, completing the drainage modeling and analysis, completing and submitting the preliminary engineering report, selecting one of the three alternatives for further development, and completing the 30% preliminary design plans for construction. Long term steps include obtaining approvals from pipeline companies, acquiring right of way easements as needed, completing plans for construction, and finally constructing the channel improvements. Future improvements to Valley View Drive Bridge could provide added benefits for this area, but would require the construction of additional stormwater detention. Now we'll kick it back over to you, Sparkle. Thank you, Jonathan, for that helpful overview of this project. Before we move into the question and answer session tonight, I want to share a quick reminder that we would love to hear from you on this and other projects rolling out across Harris County. If you have additional comments or questions throughout the life cycle of this project, or if you would like to sign up to receive email updates on this and other projects in the watershed, please visit hcfcg.org forward slash C58. Community engagement is a critical component of the work we do, and we invite your continued participation as projects move forward. As a reminder, there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on the site in the box near the presentation live stream, you can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash C58. Or if you're joining us via phone tonight, please press star six to leave a message. Additionally, I want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District after the public comment period concludes. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. Joining Jonathan for our Q&A session tonight is Project Manager Jennifer Hobbs. And now it's time to take some of your questions. All right, with that, our first question is for Jonathan. How can you be sure that improving this part of the channel will not cause flooding downstream? Um, yeah, that, that's a good question, and that's what uh, our engineers are hard at work trying to figure out. And one of the, the main things that we try to look at in this preliminary engineering stage is how can we uh, improve, uh, improve the situation 
for uh, for as many people as we possibly can without adversely impacting others. And one of those ways is stormwater detention. And so uh, we're looking into a couple of different ways to incorporate stormwater detention into this project. And our engineers um, look at some of those scenarios and plug it into our uh, stormwater modeling software. And um, and like we said, that's part of our preliminary engineering report here. And, and those results will uh, will tell us which alternative is, is best to go with, best to move forward with. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Jennifer, will you take this next question? Do we know if Atlas 14 information was used on this project? Uh, yes, Atlas 14 information was used. And for anyone that uh, is not aware of what that is, basically uh, in layman's terms, we originally design, we we always are improving uh, the way we design projects uh, here and, and across the, the country. And one of the things that recently occurred was how we design based on a 100 year rainfall or 1% event. And so, um, as we know, in Harris County, we've experienced a lot of flooding and a lot of heavy rain in the past several years. And so uh, within this area, we did increase how we designed um, the rainfall event from, you know, uh, the original amount of inches in a 100 year rainfall to the increased amount. All right, Jennifer, another question from you is from Craig. Was the city of Laporte involved in the design of this project? Uh, good question, Craig. And uh, yes, uh, we've been keeping the city of Laporte in the loop. In fact, uh, when this uh, project was in the uh, early, early developments within our planning department, uh, we used uh, an original study that was performed uh, for the city of Laporte to uh, validate and verify that that, um, that design master plan for this area still worked, and it did. And along with that, we did um, upgrade those plans to, to look at Atlas 14, and that's part of what we're doing with this project. And uh, we continue to share that information with the city of Laporte along the way. We are we are heading the design and the and the funding currently right now, but we are keeping city of Laporte in the loop in all those steps. All right, thank you, Jonathan. Would you take this next question? Why all of these studies? Why can't you just go dig the channel wider? Well, that's a, that's a question that we do get a lot, um, and. And the reason for that is there, there's just a lot of details and variables that uh, that we have to have figured out before we can go digging. I would I would love to be able to just get out there and, and start digging holes and digging wider channels. Um, but uh, for, for example, there's environmental rules that we have to follow. And so there's due diligence from that aspect. There's there's federal law associated with um, wetlands or potential wetlands. Um, there's state laws associated with uh, potential historical sites. And, and so all of those things have to be vetted out during the study phase. Um, we have to do some uh, geotechnical engineering. We have to uh, drill, drill some uh, soil boring so that we know what's below the surface. We can't start digging holes and digging channels until we know exactly what that soil looks like um, that uh, that we can't see without doing our geotechnical investigations. Uh, we need fairly extensive uh, land surveys, both boundary boundary surveys and topographic surveys, so that um, we can design our construction plans properly. Um, and one major example with this project is these pipelines. There is extensive coordination that has to happen uh, whenever we have any other utilities crossing our our features and. Um, our infrastructure. And so um, there's pipeline coordination and, and the pipelines have to uh, have to approve our plans. Um, and as we see on the screen now, we uh, we have the um, airport question to also sort through. So all of these things are examples of items that we have to sort out during this engineering phase, during this report phase before we can just uh, go out there and start digging. All right, thank you so much for that background. Really good information there. Um, Jennifer, would you like to take this next one from Mr. Brown? 
Will the pipelines add a major impact to the project as far as time and cost? Hey, good question. Um, that's why we're getting out ahead of it right now. Uh, what we end up doing for these uh, type of projects is we go to each of the pipelines and ask, uh, present them our plans and let them know what we're doing and ask for what we call letters of no objection across their pipeline easement just to make sure that uh, we're not impacting them uh, for any future maintenance that they might have to do. And um, our, our engineers right now are designing this particular area in such a way that we hope to not impact them and cost any additional funding. And we're already, as Jonathan stated before, uh, talking with all of these companies to start getting uh, some of those letters of no objection to the project so that way we can uh, keep on schedule. All right, thank you so much. It's always good to get out ahead of things. Um, let me, I'm gonna take a break here for a moment and just share a reminder that there are three ways to submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. I see so many of you using the site in the box near the presentation live stream. Um, that box is a great place to ask us questions that you want answered tonight. You can also submit a comment on our website at hcfcd.org forward slash C58. Or if you're joining us via phone tonight, please press star six and leave a message. Again, any questions not answered tonight, we'll receive a response after the public comment period concludes. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website and YouTube channel. And with that, we'll dive right back into the questions. And this one is for Jonathan, and it's from Trey. Um, Trey wants to know, are there any plans for drainage, um, for any drainage west of Valley View Bridge? We don't have any plans, uh, any immediate plans at the moment for the improvements west of the Valley View Bridge. Um, this project here that's east of the bridge is a continuation, really the final piece of, of a long-term drainage project um, uh, for improvements that go all the way uh, east uh, to across Highway 146. So for, for right now, um, we don't have any immediate plans for the upstream area, uh, but we do know that improvements uh, can be made, um, just not uh, not quite yet. All right, and Jonathan, one more for you, from, for you, and it's from Virginia, and her question is, were waivers from the FAA considered for detention near the airport, her understanding was that some waivers were obtained near Hobby Airport to enhance environmental improvements along Sims Bayou. Um, yeah, that may be, and the, uh, the the really short answer to that is it's complicated. As as we've learned over the last few months, we have lots of projects that are going on um, in this area in in Laporte and the Galveston Bay watershed, also in the Armand Bayou watershed and, and also down in Clear Creek. And so we've had coordination um, with uh, both the FAA and the Houston airport system on several of those projects. And um, the situation really varies from project to project. And, and there's just a lot of variables associated with what kind of project it is and what uh, what the project entails, what potential hazards that project could bring. Um, and so, yeah, there is there is potential for a number of a number of scenarios and options there. Um, as for this specific project, um, there actually isn't much of a, a need or a push to have a wet bottom basin. And so everything that we're able to do here um, or that we would like to do or, or are proposing um, can be done with uh, without bringing in a permanent water surface, and so um, and so we're able to to do that and and um, not have to not have to to bring up any potential hazard. So, um, but in other projects, yeah, it it, uh, it it varies and it's a case by case basis. All right, thank you for that, Jonathan. Jennifer, uh, another question for you. Um, are there any improvements for trails along the channel for the residents of Laporte? Oh, that's a good question. So that's part of why we have these meetings. We haven't received any input uh, from residents or from uh, other local entities uh, 
mud cities, et cetera, that uh, noted that they would want trails here. As um, many may know or may not know, uh, flood control doesn't actually build trails as part of the project. We typically have a partner that expresses interest. Uh, the way that we design uh, almost all of our projects does create an opportunity if trails uh, were want to, uh, if someone wanted to build trails in the future, um, but we haven't uh, received any feedback from that. But I encourage you, if you do uh, want trails in the area, please submit that input. And that's something that we can consider or pass on to other groups that would have the, the funding set aside in order to build trails. And Jonathan, I'd like for you to add on to that, just how critical partnerships are and, and partnership funding um, to do some of those things that we, by mission, cannot do. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and we work with partners all across uh, Harris County um, for, uh, for things like that, for the trails. And, and our, our flood control district um, mission is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work. Um, but uh, we, we do that with appropriate regard for community and natural values. And, and that's the part that, um, that really allows us to, uh, to bring in these partners to um, work with because a lot of our infrastructure um, is and, and can be and, and should be uh, dual use. We can we can have opportunities uh, for recreational amenities um, in and around our infrastructure while at the same time uh, providing that flood damage reduction that works. And, and so we work with our partners all across the county. Um, here we, we see the very complicated uh, spaghetti model slide of our funding partners and and so um you know we don't expect everyone to uh to be able to recite all of these partners and where these arrows are going but it's it's here to show you that um as we look for additional funding we have a number of partners that uh, uh to which we can look um and that includes the federal level such as the army corps of engineers and fema and um HUD, Housing and Urban Development, uh, but also uh, other state and local partners. And, and so all of these partners um, we work with and, um, and and they help us to uh, to complete this 2018 bond program. All right. Thank you for that, Jonathan. I just wanted to share a little more. It's, it's one of the things I found really interesting as I've learned more and more about the Flood Control District is just the amount of partners that we have and that we work with. Uh, to work towards our mission. All right, so up next is another bridge question for you, uh, Jonathan, and it's from Jason. Does the flood control district recommend the reconstruction of the bridge at Valley View or will this project fix the issue? So this project will help uh, will help the situation itself um, without um, without doing anything to the bridge. However, we, we do know we have a previous study that told us um, that we can move that bridge to, uh, to help alleviate flooding upstream of it even more. Um, but doing that uh, would require additional work and, and additional uh, detention. Um, so uh, the answer is, is kind of um, yes and no, that we will get some benefit from this project uh, without touching the bridge, but more could be done um, if, if and when we are able to do that. All right, uh, Jennifer, I'll give you this next question. Can you talk about the next steps once an alternative is selected? When can residents see dirt turning? Sure, so uh, from this meeting, from the feedback, we take comments into consideration. And of course, we review uh, the preliminary report and make a you know a good decision about an alternative, and then once we have that alternative finalized, we present it to uh, the commissioner's court for them to accept it and to allow us to move on to final design. Um, you know, final as part of this project as well, we'll have about a thirty percent plan set with the alternative selected, and we'll move that plan set and get it. Um, you know, more detailed so we can bid it out for construction. Usually that takes about nine months and also considering that we're getting all these letters of no objection. 
uh, I would imagine early 2022 is when we would see uh, dirt turning in the area. All right, Jonathan, up next, can you explain in more detail why only a portion of this project is proposed with a concrete channel with concrete channel lining? And if a channel lining is good in one place, why isn't it throughout the entire project designed that way? Sure. Um, well, first, concrete is expensive, uh, and and it's not um, it's not green. It's it's not natural. And so, um, quite honestly, we try not to use concrete lining channels um, uh, when and where we can. O of course, the uh, specific situation of the site and the project sometimes dictate that we do use concrete. Um, and the specific uh, issue here. Uh, really has to do with the pipelines and, and the crossing of those pipelines um, so that we're able to, uh, to to move the water faster because by lining the channel with concrete, it, it, um, it helps provide sort of a, a smoother surface than grass does, and that does physically move water faster. Um, and we're, we're able to do that uh, without deepening the channel in that area so that we can cross over those pipelines and not have to move them. So um, the short answer really is that we we have concrete kind of only where we need it, and then the rest of the project further east, we're able to do um, as a deeper grass line channel. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, at this time, I'm gonna pause and just remind individuals that have joined us for tonight's community engagement meeting that there are three ways to submit a comment about the project. You can submit a comment on the site in the box near the presentation live stream, and so many of you are doing that. Um, I see you, Jason, Trey, Virginia, all of you. Thank you for joining us uh, so much tonight. We really appreciate you taking the time to be engaged in what's happening in your community. You can also submit a comment on this site, um, or you can also submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash C58. And again, if you happen to be joining us tonight via phone, just press that star six to leave a message to ask your question or provide feedback. Um, and following this presentation, the Q&A, um, any messages that are not answered during the Q&A, we will respond to those questions um, after the public comment period concludes. And we'll be posting the meeting live stream on our website and on our YouTube channel. All right, with that, let's get back into those questions. Our next question up is for Jonathan, and it is, is all the funding secured for this project? We do have funding secured. Um, according to our 2018 bond program, we have uh, $16 million uh, secured for the completion of this project. So, um, we are we are fairly set to go there. All right, thank you. So we have a question from Virginia, and it is why were only concrete linings considered um, with the runoff a major source of pollution to our Galveston Bay, um, to our Galveston Bay, and the proven benefits of green corridors to clean runoff. It seems that the impacts to the bay are lower priority than impacts to the pipeline. These plans appear to show a lack of environmental innovation and little emphasis on natural values. Exploration green and clear lake is not only a successful flood control model, but it's a, a true enhancement, according to uh, Virginia, uh, to the community. Can you uh, expound on that one? Um, sure, and, and yeah, Virginia, um, I think most of us here agree. We we don't like to we don't like to use concrete. Um, we don't like to put concrete channels down. We agree they're not green. Uh, flood, the flood control district over the last several years, uh, I think, has has made a, a lot of strides in being able to incorporate things like natural stable channel design uh, in a lot of areas in all parts of the county. Um, however, sometimes uh, based on the site conditions. Uh, we, we don't always have a lot of a choice, and in this case, we have uh, both limited right away, we have limited space uh, with which to work, and then also there's the, the pipelines that we talked about. And, and when we say impacts to pipelines, we really mean um, 
we would have to pay lots and lots and lots of money for them to be relocated if we were to go deeper. So those those pipelines are all crossing below that existing channel, but they're not uh, they're not far below that channel. And so if we went uh, with an option that did not have concrete, it would mean that in order to convey that same amount of water, we would need to take that channel deeper. And it's the depth of that channel that would then impact the pipelines. And we'd have to start talking about um, paying for 58 pipelines to be relocated um, even deeper than they are. And so, um, unfortunately, in, in this case, um, in you know, only a portion, not, not the whole thing, but unfortunately in this case, uh, concrete is um, is a solution that we have. And so we definitely agree. We like to avoid that. Um, we, we like to put an emphasis on natural values uh, where we can. And, um, and we certainly look to be able to do that in, in other areas. All right, Jennifer, our next question is, can you explain in more detail what happens during the design stage? Sure, so once we move into the design stage, uh, what we're doing, we're doing a little bit of continuation of if there's any right of way acquisition and continuation of that uh, utility work that we started during this stage. And in design, what we do is we get into the, the fine details of what sort of right of way we have to work with. Uh, we're figuring out exactly where the start and end of the project is. We're, we're reviewing, uh, we're making sure we have all the permits that we need, either environmental permits, uh, local permits from any local municipalities, and really fine tuning what we believe uh, the the estimated cost of the project would be so we can make sure that funding is set aside. And then once we have those final plans and we feel like we're ready to go and we have all the permits and we've done all of our due diligence, then we'll go ahead and advertise the project and, um, you know, secure a contractor and, and begin the work. And uh, we try to do that as quickly as we can. And... Um, you know, once we get into the construction phase, then uh, we, uh, you know, we're we're out there every day, you know, making sure that they're building it to our specs. And then once construction is complete and we've made sure that everything is uh, done to what we, um, to our expectations, then we'll kind of turn it over to our operation and maintenance division. So we have several divisions in uh, Harris County Flood Control and so then our maintenance uh, crews will look over, we'll, we'll make any um, necessary uh, plantings if required, and then they'll just, you know, keep it clean and keep checking one. And that's just kind of, then the life cycle begins again years later. So that's, that's pretty much how it goes. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, with that, I've noticed that several have joined our meeting late. So I'd like to at this time ask Jonathan to go back over a few of the project specific slides. We wanna make sure that everyone gets all of the important uh, project information. So Jonathan, over to you. Sorry, I think I would. Know that by now. Uh, sure, we can go back over and, and we'll start back at the uh, at the project information slide and, and show you our vicinity map here that this project is located in Harris County Precinct 2, uh, southwest of the intersection of State Highway 225 and Highway 146. And it is in the San Jacinto and Galveston Bay watershed. Uh, the project is about 1,500 feet long. It is shown here in red, and it is within the city of LaPorte. Uh, the project extends east from Valley View Drive over to its junction with uh, the existing improved channel, uh, which we call channel F101-00-00. Uh, the project builds on previous projects to improve this channel uh, and it fits within our future improvement plans for the watershed as a whole. 
Uh, back to this life cycle slide again, uh, we're now in the preliminary engineering stage of the project, and that's indicated by the red arrow there. Um, and it's relatively early in our project life cycle. Um, we also call this the project uh, development stage. Um, and we can go in and take a bit of a closer look at, uh, at the project. Um, the existing grass line channel, it's located within a 60 foot wide right away, and that's outlined here in red. Water in this channel moves from west to east, uh, which is left to right on this slide. Uh, you can see there outlined in blue is the existing pipeline corridor and pipes within this corridor run north and south and cross underneath the existing channel. Um, currently, this pipeline corridor contains 58 pipelines and, and those are owned by 18 different pipeline companies. So it's quite the coordination effort to, uh, to do a project that crosses this pipeline corridor. Um, and designing a project that avoids impacts to this pipeline corridor really presents us with a significant challenge. Uh, I have a couple of site photos here, and these are recent. Um, the photo on the left is facing east from Valley View Drive, and the photo on the right is facing west toward the Valley View Drive bridge. These show a uh, well-maintained but relatively shallow grassland channel. Uh, and as we talked about before, uh, replacement of the existing Valley View Drive bridge was not considered as part of this project. Um, and that bridge is owned by a separate municipality and it's not within our jurisdiction. Couple of more uh, photos to look at here. Um, the one on the left is facing east uh, towards Sins Road, and you can see the pipeline markers. This is within that pipeline corridor, and all those red uh, pipeline markers uh, clearly indicate um, where those pipelines uh, cross the channel. Uh, and we would have to get approval from uh, these 18 pipeline companies to cross the 58 pipelines. Uh, in the photo on the right, we're again facing east, but we're a little farther downstream, and we're showing the junction of this F10106 channel with the F10100 channel. And that and you can also see here the existing concrete channel liner, liner that was part of that uh, previous project to improve the channel. Um, as mentioned uh, before, we do uh, th this new uh, project works together with those earlier improvements. The project purpose is to reduce flooding risk adjacent to the F10106 channel and upstream areas. Proposed improvements include a new concrete channel lining for the western half of the channel, while the eastern half will remain grass lined. The concrete lining will allow the channel to carry away stormwater more quickly, which reduces the risk of flooding, while stormwater detention uh, would temporarily store the stormwater to be sure that there are no downstream adverse impacts. A concrete lining on the western half of the channel accomplishes the goal of improving stormwater conveyance without the need to deepen the channel. Uh, and as we talked about before, that would result in uh, very costly um, relocations of those pipelines. The new channel lining um, actually would provide greater protection for the pipelines uh, while also improving the stormwater conveyance. Coordination with those pipelines is underway. Um, and we have various stormwater storage options. Um, and those include areas excavated within the channel or excavated separately from the channel, but connected to it. So the stormwater can flow in during heavy rain. Um, and as part of this preliminary engineering phase, we're looking to determine uh, which of these options is best. All three channel alternatives or options for this project will use a concrete line channel from Valley View Drive across the pipelines. As mentioned before, uh, the use of concrete allows for a greater flow rate while avoiding uh, potentially costly pipeline relocations. 
the three alternatives considered during this preliminary engineering process um, each present a different option for providing stormwater detention necessary to mitigate for the proposed increased flow rates. Um, these alternatives vary by cost, but if viable, all have the same benefits in terms of lowered water surface elevations and so reducing the, uh, the risk of flooding during a heavy rainfall event. We talked a little bit about proximity to the airport, and it's because of this um, that we are uh, proposing dry bottom alternatives uh, and no, um, no permanent pools of, of water with, uh, with this project. Um, and so we can look again at our next steps. Um, they include obtaining and considering public input, and that's why we're here tonight. Uh, we will complete the drainage and modeling analysis. Um, our uh, engineers will submit the preliminary engineering report for review and approval, and, and then upon that, uh, we will select one of the three alternatives that will move into the design phase. Um, also included in this preliminary engineering phase is about a 30% uh, construction or, or set of uh, design plans. In the long term, um, though that includes uh, obtaining the proper approvals from the pipeline companies, also acquiring uh, right away easements if needed. Uh, we would com fully complete our uh, construction plans um, and then we would move into the construction phase and that's when we uh, would start doing the improvements, taking the channel and, and um, placing the concrete. Um, and then, as we mentioned, for, uh, future improvements to the Valley View Drive Bridge could provide additional benefits, um, but that uh, that item would require construction of additional stormwater detention. All right, now let's jump back into the questions. Thank you so much that, for that helpful. Um, overview of the project specific details. We always try to go back if we have time, um, especially when I notice that uh, individuals participating have joined late. Um, so thank you for that, Jonathan. All right, Jennifer, would you take this question? Outside of the pipelines, are there any potential project impacts residents should be aware of? Um, you know, the the main impacts that we usually see is during construction. Um, construction is, you know, can always be a headache. I, I know we see a lot of roadway construction in the Houston area, and we're all pretty familiar with that. Uh, luckily, with this project, it's more of a it's a channel thing and uh, a channel project and, and some detention as well. So most of it will be off of the road, but you'll see some ingress and egress of uh of trucks coming in and out of of the area and um you know sometimes uh dirt gets on the road where we usually stay pretty well on top of contractors to make sure that they get that swept up uh quickly and uh, that would be the major impacts i i would see from from any residents in the in the future when we actually construct the project all right, thank you for that. All right, Jonathan, would you take this next question? What do you mean when you say that stormwater detention mitigates for channel improvements? Can you explain how that works? Um, sure, and, and sometimes uh, when we talk through this, we may gloss over uh, some of these details, but when we say channel improvements, um, we, we mean a variety of things that can be widening the channel or deepening the channel or a combination of that. Um, or in this case, concrete lining the channel, which the concrete provides a smoother surface so that water can actually physically move uh, faster along that concrete. And, and so by doing these channel improvements, we're able to move water away from an area more quickly. Water just gets out more quickly. Um, but when we do that in isolation or, or just by itself, uh, we move water away from one area more quickly, that means it goes somewhere else more quickly. And we don't want that. We 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 can't have that. It's our policy. And aside from being our, our policy, it's um it's it's a uh, good idea to not cause adverse impact to to anyone else. And so 
um, we, we don't want to be improving one area and then making uh, other areas worse. And, and that's where the stormwater detention uh, comes into play and, and we can do um, different things with it. And that's what this um, this preliminary engineering report is looking to to do and investigate is how can we provide and where can we provide that stormwater detention so that we can move water away from one area more quickly, but then not put, uh, put more water um, onto, onto the next uh, area downstream. All right, thank you. Jennifer, will you take this next question? What kind of input are you hoping to see from the public? Sure. Um, you know, we we do a lot of these meetings uh, around the Harris County area, and these are the typical meetings that we will get uh, impact or input from the public that notes maybe there is uh, trails or recreational facilities desired within the area. As of now, I've said we haven't heard anything about that, uh, but you know, if enough comments are made, we can get that to the appropriate entities and and work on uh, a potential partnership with with another entity to to build those sorts of features. You know, sometimes uh, there's desire, for instance, you know, we've talked a little bit about Valley View Bridge, but uh, perhaps there's a, a big uh, community push to to start working on that. And so, you know, we we want to hear those comments. If there are other features um, that we may not be aware of, we we study these very closely and we we take good care to go out um, during a rain event to see kind of what the water is doing. But you know, sometimes there's there's interesting things. You know, you're the ones that live out there every day, so you know we want to we want to know what you think and what you've observed, and so we can take those into consideration. When we're providing the best alternative you're you know we we can't know about everything going on in the county at, at each moment or every little thing that that happens within a street or a neighborhood so it's you know we we really appreciate the input of people that uh, live out there uh, adjacent to this channel or near the channel so you know the day-to-day -day impacts that uh, this this channel may cause all right, thank you so much for that. And with that, I'd like to share one final reminder that we are continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project. Uh, and it, for this particular project, the comment period runs through December 23rd, 2020. So get your comments and your feedback in. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us this evening and for your engagement with the project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a lovely evening. Good night. Mm -hmm.